You know, if, what I'm if they say they don't know Cavo, they either wasn't in the streets or they wasn't in that scamming world. Because you ask a scammer from Chicago about Cavo, if they like him or not. Now, if you ask a pedophile ass cameraman that wasn't in the game, that might want to be a rapper back then, but nobody took notice to him or nothing happened for him, then he might have a different opinion. He might say, Yeah, he ain't from real. But then he might be from Maywood talking about Chicago. Is there any like words of wisdom, man, you can drop on the, on the young sister? Man, stick to what you believe in. Do not. I'm not gonna use the word don't listen to no one. Listen to everyone. Take 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 a little bit from everyone. Piece it together in your own way and then go your own route. And stick to the script and don't let none throw you off your track. And if you're a young man, do not make women your first priority. And if you're a female, don't make men your first priority. Hmm. And bro, that's uh that can be challenging, man, when you're young, you know, not being tender, you know what I'm <laughs> saying, and getting immersed into Chasing, chasing skirts or chasing a guy or something like that. Like, did you always had a discipline? I always had. I was always getting to the money. When you get to the chase the money, the girls should come with that. They go chase that shit. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna chase. They just gonna be there. They're part of it. You see what I'm saying? What I'm getting money for? What I'm going to buy all this shit for? What I'm looking good for? I ain't looking good for no niggas. I ain't gonna get the new Rolls Royce for no niggas to look at. Or I, when I was a shorty, I don't get the shabby and put the rims on it for no niggas to look at it. The girls always been a part of that, but they ain't just haven't been first. They always gonna be in mind for sure, but just not first. No, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. How did you uh, you link up with Kevo, man? Chicago, hmm. just like dirt, just like just like everybody else. Because you know some people say they not familiar with him being. Uh, they Chicago. full of shit. You know, if, what I'm you, if they say they don't know Kevo, they either wasn't in the streets. Or they wasn't in that scamming world. Because you ask a scammer from Chicago about Kevo. If they like him or not. Now if you ask a pedophile ass cameraman. That wasn't in the game. That might want to be a rapper back then. But nobody took notice to him. Or nothing happened for him. Then he might have a different opinion. He might say yeah, he ain't from real. But then he might be from Maywood. Talking about Chicago. You know what I'm saying? And for the people who are not familiar with Chicago, that's like a suburb? Yeah, something? it's a uh, suburb. Uh, so it's out on the outskirts. Yeah, it's uh, not Chicago. Sure. It's Maywood. Sure. <laughs> you say you linked up with him from Chicago. But right? yeah, but Kevo from Chicago, his mom and them had money. His daddy from the Ickies. Like, it's, it's, I don't want to put too much out there because he got a real documentary coming out. Oh, for sure. But for the sure. naysayers and all that, it's kind of big. But hmm. his daddy going to be on there. His family on there. His first baby mama's on there. His kids. All the things that they say is have to say about him. It's like, it's just going to be fucked up because he's going to be like, oh, he's not from Chicago. Mm -hmm. No, he's just not a bum from Chicago. His daddy was from the projects. Matter of fact, his daddy's from the Ickies. His mama's from the Hillians. That's the low end. Mm -hmm. His mama got money. His mama came up, started buying stores and all this and that. By the time he was eight, she owned stores in uh, Indiana, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, in the malls and shit. Sure. So they moved out there from eight to six, to what, what do you say, from eight to about 14 or some shit. They know how to go get into a mom's mom's got me in problem or going through whatever she's going through. He back out here with his daddy in them. His where's his daddy? In the Ickies. He don't want to move there. It's crazy that he's trying to stay there tonight, house to house, working little jobs, and here comes the scammer. Mm -hmm. Somebody introduced him into it and you see him today, right? No, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, you you uh you come across as somebody who's I don't wanna necessarily say like guarded, but um like you and you and your, your people's corner, like does it bother you when you witness like people come out with the allegations about them from the cooperating to the any of that type of nah, stuff? No, because I like I like mystery. I like the real when shit started. Mm -hmm. So I like it because it's like damn they really think that they don't know. I seen this paperwork six years ago when he first went to jail, nigga. I hate think the folks who knew was in there, like, why would my people be looking out for him? Why would my people be anywhere near him or they all in there? Oh, they been had this shit this day one. So all the rooms and all that, it got started from a nigga that was jealous of him that really tricked the Wuchi nigga what everybody in the city know about. See, real niggas know real shit. He was the real rat. So people didn't know Cabo. Oh, that's your part of certain situations, like a real money situation and net, then you will know him. But if you kind of like lower level and just like a bum on the block and the net, then you might not know a nigga. You might not be in tune with the money. 
But the niggas who know, they know. But a lot of niggas knew Kevin was like, as like one of them niggas. He was the first flashy car packer, I should say. The first nigga you see with the Rolls Royces and the, the Lambo through Chicago, for sure. Sitting up around the yellow Lambo through Chicago, you're going to be noticed. He didn't do that in Indiana and all that. He did that right in Chicago. I, I took notice nobody never robbed him. Nobody never kidnapped him. Not to say they weren't planning or trying. I'd heard plenty. I'd heard his name on the chopping block a million times. Nothing never happened to him. Why? Because he always used his brain. And the one thing about Kevo, like he say, his money keep him out of reach with people. I mean, like money don't matter, but money can have you some place that a nigga without money can't get to. You can, but remember, you can still reach back to where they at, but they can't reach to where you at. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Ain't got no money. Oh, for sure, for sure. Man, paying attention to your social media, bro, like you share a lot of photos um, of food. You know what I'm saying? On your story. I know you said you, you was a bigger dude. You got into yeah. a situation where you, you said you had like a kidney, a kidney strength, so you lost yeah. weight. Um, but aside from that, so you always been to like fun. Lean, down. all the little boys out there drinking all that lean, they got the Kevin. We were doing that shit early 2000s. Oh, that's what led to you having yeah. a kidney Yeah, yeah, shit like that. So you gotta be you gotta be careful when you're doing that. Uh, like addicted to it? You was uh, like. I mean, yeah, I was getting, like we just bringing that shit through, drinking that shit, having that shit. We used to just drink that shit straight out the bottle. We didn't put no pop to it or nothing. Just off that shit. So this is like during the whole scissor, the syrup uh, like culture. Know some scissor. Yeah, all that shit, like the beginning of this shit. Yeah. I don't think I knew that, man. So at one point in time, you was a heavy lean drinker. Yeah, heavy X pills, heavy lean. My my story with the lady I'm talking about with the BMF the shit. Me, me. Uh, we made a million dollars off X pills right here. Right here. That's what our story on my true crime story is about. I supplied me with, it was a million dollars worth of pills. Of course, I didn't make an M. I made, what, about a couple hundred out of it, cash out of rest, but what I mean, she was back on 18 with her. She was right downtown at the, in the presidential town, was cooling. <laughs> by herself. All the other BMF niggas and them, I love this and that. But uh, when it came to her, she come by herself. She don't need no security and she come fearless. And she ain't dealing with nothing but me. So I know real monsters, you know what I'm saying? Real monsters. How the girls be having a big fat Louis bag, the one for 1500? Yeah, she had two or three of those, full of bread. Like, like you need some help, lady? Like, like she just little one trying to get there and waiting on the 18 wheeler to pick up, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my lady, Miss Mimi, man. A legend. Did you, did you have like a relationship with like uh, Misha, uh, Tia? Nah, with me, with me and Misha came be, why he behind the bars? Mm -hmm. Because now with her came all the BMF niggas, which came my partners to even do mouse. This is before mouse, remember? Talk about it. So they, this they gave me the it was like, man, y'all, you see Chief Keep up there going crazy? Mm -hmm. You need to get one of them little boys up there like that. You know, we know everybody. This is why you hustling. They give you the idea to jump to the music game. Shout out to my little nigga, little twin, little evil twin. His brother is the other twin. He's the president of Motown. That was my partner too, in this mouth shit. From BMO. Man, go get one of them little boys from Chicago. We just gonna turn them up. What did y'all see? Big folks came and got a nigga from Chicago, and they turned them up. But you said, as far as like T and me, you said, that's from, like, since he- I knew them, I, I mean, I never met T before, but mm -hmm. I was introduced to uh, me to talk to him numerous of times on the phone due to Big Cuz, BMF Big Cuz. I don't heard, I don't heard that name. That was my partner. He was the one that was in Chicago with me. Big Cuz was here for a year, straight. For real? Living his bitch, chilling, going to get his coffee, <laughs> like just living regular life, helping me with the now situation. And what I mean by that, like calling people like T.I. and yeah, Mouse is getting kicked out of school. He need uh go to private school and the T.I. like, yeah, I'll put the money up and see what his mom wants to do and like those type of calls. No, for sure. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Did you have any uh, relationship with Blue Da Vinci? 